Hello everyone, I'm Sarah McAteer. I'm the Monitoring and Evaluation Officer for the project. And today I just want to give a short overview of the methods that we use throughout both phases of the study to monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of the campaign. Firstly, firstly we'll have a look at phase one. In the initial stages of the study, it was decided that three methods would be used to collect the relevant data needed. First of all, there was pre and post campaign participation monitoring, collection of tonnage or gate weight data, and pre and post attitudinal surveys, which were focused on the transients and apartment campaigns. The monitoring of the campaigns consisted of the identification of campaign areas, recording two consecutive rounds of participation monitoring for each stream, which enabled us to establish a set out rate for each street and for the overall campaign. Tonnage data was used to measure the level of recycling through gateway data, and the use of attitudinal surveys in the transients and apartments were conducted to establish the level of understanding, attitudes and any potential barriers towards recycling in the campaign areas. All three of these methods were conducted throughout phase one, before and after each campaign. At the end of phase one, and in preparation for phase two, we evaluated the lessons learned from these methods, which led to the formation and inclusion of a number of further methods that would be used to gain a stronger insight into the effects of the campaign. These consisted of carrying out participation and now contamination monitoring on all phase two campaigns. We also obtained attitudinal surveys for each of the campaigns and collected data not only in pre-campaign, post-campaign, but now at behavioural change stage of the campaigns. The decision to introduce contamination monitoring in phase two led to campaign officers being able to carry out contamination monitoring parallel to participation monitoring at two consecutive collections of each stream. The campaign officers used a contamination matrix that was used and was able to establish the percentage of contamination at street and at campaign level. This highlighted the level and the type of contamination that occurs at each stream and at each street. The benefits of campaign officers being monitoring these areas enabled them to gain geographical knowledge of the area and through consecutive monitoring, we're able to establish any issues that may be relevant to the campaign, such as access to bins for monitoring purposes, any occurrences of fly tipping, and the amenities and facilities that can be updated or used for the campaign. The information gained in pre-campaign monitoring helped to create a more targeted campaign for the area. The inclusion of behavioral change monitoring enabled participation and contamination levels to be continually monitored. It established street level houses and contamination for the waste streams and also enabled campaign officers to identify houses that can be targeted with further campaign material and with face-to-face -face interaction. The use of attitudinal surveys for phase two were, carry out, were carried out in all campaigns face to face and through prior and, prior and after the campaigns. As there is no single measure for success, the survey is focused on the attitudes towards recycling, the levels of understanding of recycling, any obstacles in the area, and also the type of campaign materials that, keep, that could be used, as well as gaining demographic information of the area, such as cultural backgrounds and the languages spoken. To evaluate the effectiveness of the study, targets are set for both participation and tonnage data. Based on established targets set, participation targets are generated to show a change between pre and post campaign monitoring, such as the table here. The creation of tonnage targets were based on two factors added together, an increase in tonnage equivalent to the percentage increase of new participants and the increase in tonnage from existing participants, equivalent to 10% of the average recycler's uncaptured material, which is shown in this table here. 
And now on to some of the key learning points that we gained from this monitoring. We found that it was beneficial to establish a monitoring schedule or framework prior to the campaign to account for any bad weather, absences such as the like, or any contingencies that need to be made. Carrying out such monitoring can be expensive, and other issues such as certain streams being subject to change, such as the organic participation that can be changed due to the seasons. As a result of the changes made in the second phase, the monitoring in phase two was very much an evolution. For contamination monitoring, we found that it can be more beneficial to highlight one stream in pre-monitoring to monitor contamination throughout the campaign as opposed to all streams. Contamination can be difficult to measure as wrong items can be deliberately hidden in bins and can be unseen to the monitor. Contamination monitoring itself is a partial measure, measure and cannot be linked to other data such as weigh data. However, this monitoring enabled officers to gain an insight into the campaign area's geography and identify any barriers to participation and recycling. In carrying out surveys, the measures of attitudes must be noted that in small areas, residents' demogra demographics can change dramatically from street to street. It can be, be beneficial to return to the same streets or houses for follow-up surveys. However, this can be hard to achieve. However, surveys enable con campaign officers to engage with residents pre-campaign and create a more tailored campaign materials for the area. And in including behavioural change monitoring, this enabled campaign officers to detect those who were noted as consistently contaminating and were able to engage further with campaign materials. Thank you very much for listening to my part of the seminar. Uh, we will now take a short break in which we will receive some afternoon tea.